During America's Civil War, battlefields became graveyards for many soldiers. In 1866, the unidentified remains of over 2,000 soldiers were disinterred from battlefields around Washington, D.C., and reburied in a common grave in Arlington, Virginia. This established the first tomb of the unknown soldiers. During World War I, more than 5 million Allied Forces soldiers were killed in action or died of wounds or diseases related to the war. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers were buried where they fell on the battlefield. Others were transported to mass graves. A large percentage of the young men who died in the Great War went to their final resting place unknown, their graves unmarked. To honor them, Congressman Hamilton Fish of New York introduced legislation to bring the body of an unknown American back from Europe for burial of his remains with appropriate ceremonies in the Memorial Amphitheater of the National Cemetery in Arlington, Virginia. Resolution 67, passed by Congress on March 4, 1921, established the Tomb of the Unknowns. On October 24, 1921, Sergeant Edward Younger placed a spray of white roses on one of four caskets. Thus, the unknown soldier was officially designated. The casket came to the United States and lay in state at the Capitol until November 11, 1921, Armistice Day, which is today known as Veterans Day. In a speech before 100,000 gathered at Arlington National Cemetery and broadcast simultaneously in New York City and San Francisco, President Harding honored the unknown American soldier. In his speech, he respectfully said, we know not whence he came, but only that his death marks him with the everlasting glory of an American dying for his country. He might have come from any one of millions of American homes. Some mother gave him in her love and tenderness, and with him her most cherished hopes. Hundreds of mothers are wondering today, finding a touch of solace in the possibility that the nation bows in grief over the body of the one she bore to live and die if need be, for the Republic. In 1958, the remains of unknown soldiers from World War II and the Korean War were interred at the Tomb of the Unknowns. 26 years later, the Vietnam Unknown was honored. We write no last chapters. We close no books. We put away no final memories. An end to America's involvement in Vietnam cannot come before we have achieved the fullest possible accounting of those missing in action. Between the burial of the soldiers from World War I and World War II, scientific advances were underway that would forever change the tomb of the unknowns. On February 28, 1953, American scientist James Watson and his British colleague Francis Crick announced they had discovered the secret of life by identifying the structure of DNA. Suddenly to see the molecule which is responsible for heredity and which makes possible human existence it was a, a very big step in such a man's understanding of himself. Deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, is the nucleic acid present in the cells of all living organisms. It is often referred to as the building blocks of life, since DNA encodes the genetic material which determines what an organism will develop into, and performs a number of other functions which are critical to life. DNA has a molecular structure called a double helix. Slight differences in DNA result in the superficial differences in the way people look. DNA identification works in the way that uh, we would get, in our case, we would get a bone sample. We would process that sample for nuclear DNA. We would obtain a profile and then compare it to either the parents or siblings related to that person or hopefully even a secondary standard from that person to try to come up, try to determine who that person may be. Within weeks of winning the race to crack the genetic code hidden within cells, Watson and Crick published their findings. Over the next few years, other scientists would conduct further tests to confirm their discoveries. In 1962, the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was won by Watson, Crick, and Maurice Wilkins, whose research on X-ray crystallography was a vital part of the discovery. 
Once it was understood that DNA carried the genetic message, scientists built upon the technique pioneered by Watson, Crick, and their contemporaries to change the practice of medicine, transform biology, and create the biotechnology industry. The discovery of DNA is perhaps the most significant biological discovery of the 20th century. Innovation so often comes from something not part of a big organization. 45 years after Watson and Crick's fateful discovery, the Pentagon reopened the Tomb of the Unknowns in order to conduct DNA tests on the remains of the unknown servicemen from the Vietnam War. We disturb this hallowed ground with profound reluctance. And we take this step only because of our abiding commitment to account for every warrior who fought and died to preserve the freedoms that we cherish. If advances in technology can ease the lingering anguish of even one family, then our path is clear. And so we yield today to the promise of science with the hope that the heavy burden of doubt may be lifted from a family's heart. A sample of mitochondrial DNA removed from the remains matched that of a soldier's mother. The soldier was identified as First Lieutenant Michael Blassie. On July 11, 1998, Michael Blassie was reburied with full military honors near his home in Missouri. Michael's brother George stated, He was a mentor. He was a hero. He deserves to be known. In 2009, an 18-year investigation was solved when DNA testing identified the remains of a Gulf War veteran pilot to be those of Captain Michael Scott Spiker. A current effort is underway to use DNA testing to identify hundreds of bodies buried in a mass grave in northern France from World War I and the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific in Honolulu from World War II. More than 88,000 Americans remain missing from World War II, the Korean War, the Cold War, and the Vietnam War. Their families have been haunted by the uncertainty of how and where they died, or if they were taken prisoner and might still be alive. Today our government continues to forge relationships with foreign countries so that the Department of Defense can dispatch teams of investigators to use DNA testing to help find answers for these families. Through DNA testing, soldiers who have never been forgotten are finally no longer lost. The families are very thankful that we've played a role in the identification uh, for the DNA laboratory. If we talk about the JPAC mission, family members of those lost service members from prior conflicts, the, the, their loss, though it may have happened 40 or 50 years ago, as if it is as real to them and as fresh to them as if it, as if it happened yesterday. So if we're able to help identify them by using DNA, they, they uh, are very thankful that they could actually close that chapter in their life. In 1999, the Pentagon announced that no new remains would be placed in the memorial. With new methods for testing DNA and the requirement that all new soldiers give blood samples when they join the military, it is almost certain that there will never be another unknown. In addition to unlocking the Tomb of the Unknowns, the discovery of DNA and its further enhancements continue to change history. In the field of crime solving, scientists can now analyze traces of DNA from something as simple as a human hair, drop of blood, or semen to positively identify and convict a criminal. DNA is also being used by biologists, paleontologists, and archaeologists to trace human origins across the continents. As the science field progresses, it remains to be seen in what other ways that DNA will rewrite history and change our lives. For now, our world is thankful that the innovation of DNA testing is used to identify a soldier's remains, and that although he may be stripped of his life, he is no longer stripped of his identity.